Any given Thursday rolling along here with Harrison Graham and Chase Sr. Let's shift to college football here. Manny Diaz replacements if the Miami head coach were to get fired and the hot seat is sizzling right now down in Miami. He is certainly on the hot seat after just a brutal loss chase to Florida State. They're up eight with four minutes to go. They lose by three in regulation. Now they're five and five on the season, whereas a couple of weeks ago, People thought maybe they're riding the ship after a brutal 1-3 and three start, I believe it was. This seat is on fire right now after losing to their rivals in a game that they completely controlled until the last couple of minutes. Can we be honest here and just say that Miami has been a joke of a college football program for a long time? It yeah. seems as though every single year, and I know that they were good there for Mark Reicht, They've Mark, been bad for a really Mark long Rick, time, yeah. and they need to rebuild this thing from top to bottom. Now, they bring in a new athletic director, which is why we're doing this video, but every year we go into it and we're like, Miami's going to be back. Miami's ranked. They're really good. They win the first couple of games on their schedule, and then they just go in a tailspin. And under Manny Diaz, they have failed to find their footing. And I just think Diaz is better suited as a coordinator. I thought he got this job way too early. He got this job because his pops was a – key political figure down in Florida and Miami, and it has clearly shown that he hasn't been ready. You get your hands on De'Ara King, you think once again this program is back, and they're not. It's time to move on from Manny Diaz, and I think the new AD is going to do just that, and that's why this video is serving the people. So what do you guys think? Should Miami fire Manny Diaz? It's pretty clear what we think. Type Y for yes, type in for no. This is Miami, man. I'm not saying it's it's you know the 90s or whatever, but you can do better than Manny Diaz. Get your votes in, and uh, after uh, this uh, this uh, sponsor plug uh, from Chase Senior, we will get to 10 candidates to replace him. I'm betting on Manny Diaz to be let go. You can get your bets in thanks to our sportsbook partner, BetUS. Just head to chatsports.com slash bet. Enter the promo code chat125. You get a 125% deposit bonus. And if you put $100 into your account for first-time signups and you lay a bet, we're going to send you a free jersey. That's right, a free jersey. This deal, it ain't no joke. Just go to chatsports.com slash bet. Enter the promo code chat125. Sign up, deposit at least $100. You get that 125% deposit back. That's $225 to game with. You place a bet on any game, then all you have to do, email us jersey at chatsports.com, letting us know that you followed all of these steps. If you want a Miami jersey crying, you can cop one. A Florida <laughs> jersey with Dan Mullen. They were celebrating in the locker room after beating Samford. You can get your hands on one of those, too. <laughs> Alabama is actually a good program. So, too, is Ohio State. TCU is where Harrison Graham went to school. They have some of the freshest jerseys across college football. Get a free jersey by following those steps. If you forgot those steps, go back, screenshot it. We got you covered. All right, let's get to 10 candidates here. And uh, there's some interesting names, and uh, there's a very interesting one coming up. Uh, Joe Moorhead, the offensive coordinator at Oregon. Um, I don't know if this is the right culture fit for Moorhead. It didn't work in Starkville. He seems to be doing well in Oregon. I think either super high on the East Coast or staying in the Pacific more Northwest seems like a more better fit than in Miami. But he has rebuilt his name. He could be a guy worth calling. Look, I think the Mississippi State thing was just a bad situation at an awful time. That's yep. what I think it was for Joe Moorhead. His play design, his offense, the way that he kind of maneuvers as a coach – I think it's great. It was awesome for Penn State. They won a Big Ten title. It was bad when he went to Mississippi State, even though they won some games and had some bad moments. I thought offensively they did some good things, and then he's been able to recapture that with Oregon. I like him as a prime head coach candidate. And then at number nine, it's really the monster name that we had to put on this <laughs> list last minute. Can you imagine how much – Florida State would be in shambles if Deion Sanders actually takes the Miami gig. If I'm the new AD at Miami and I'm looking at the head coaching vacancy and I want to make a splash and I can bring in a guy who is going to recruit the hell out of that state and bring Miami back, I'm going big, I'm going bold with <laughs> Deion Sanders. Damn right I am. The risk of Deion Sanders, number one, he obviously has very limited experience. They're doing well at Jackson State. He did get a top 60 recruiting class at an FCS program at HBCU. That's pretty damn impressive. The risk, though, is if this just flames out and he can't get the right assistant coaches in there, you maybe set yourself back. But the question is, aren't you already set pretty far back if you are Miami? So maybe it That's is why I'm being aggressive a calculated risk for Deion Sanders. I would find it interesting. He got legitimate buzz 
from TCU. They've kind of backed off in recent days. Maybe that changes. Maybe, maybe they circle back to him. But the fact that he's already getting in rooms with Power 5 programs tells me that he is on program's radar. And, hey, if Florida State's in shambles, I don't have a problem with that. At number eight, Matt Campbell. I'm higher on him, Chase. I just think he's going to have better options, quite yeah. frankly, if he wants them. And he's also proven the last couple of years if he doesn't get the, the offer that he wants, whether it's from a financial standpoint or from a fit standpoint, he'll just hang out at Iowa State and, and continue to get raises there because he is perfectly comfortable with that job. I'm not sure Miami's the right job for Matt Campbell. What's hilarious is that everybody is dragging this guy saying, well, he didn't want to win a Big 12 championship. That wasn't his goal for this team. It was putting together and fostering a good culture. It's Iowa State. Who the State. hell cares? It's Iowa State. And when the Cyclones are competing and beating with the likes of Oklahoma, it's pretty damn oppressive. And you know why they've been able to do that? Matt Campbell. So if I have confidence in a coach to rebuild a program, bring him back to relevance, and bring him back to the Miami that I know when they were balling out with, Warren Sapp, Sean Taylor, Ed Reed, and the countless other studs that they had, it's Matt Campbell who can be that program and culture changer. Who is the dream head coach target for Miami? And I'm glad you said that too. People don't realize how bad Iowa State was when he got yeah, there. I mean, they were like, now. here's Kansas. Iowa State was like right here. That's what like, I'm I saying, mean, man. they were basically right there on par with Kansas in the Big 12. And Iowa State freaking won a New Year's Six he wins Bowl. Wins big games. <laughs> Miami loses them. Yeah, all, they so. won a New Year's Six Bowl in the big uh, out of the, coming out of the Big 12 title game last year. It's ridiculous. Let us know who your dream head coach target would be for the Miami Hurricanes. We still got some candidates to get to. Dan Lenning, the defensive coordinator for Georgia. He's not a splashy name. He's maybe not a guy you've heard of, but he's a name that's gaining steam. And hell. When you're the D.C., even though Kirby Smart is running the show for the number one defense by a mile in America, you're going to get some looks. Georgia, Florida, regional, it makes sense. They're getting studs in the recruiting base at Georgia, especially on the defensive side of the ball. You get the right O.C. in there with Lenning, that could work. Luke Fickle at number six of Cincinnati. And I love what George has done, by the way. Everybody's like, we're moving in an offensive direction. George is like, yeah, we're still going to focus on offense, but we're going all in on defense. And that could win them a national championship this year because seemingly nobody else across the country can play any defense at all. Luke Fickle's very interesting, Harrison. I know you have some thoughts on this. Yep. I can't say enough good things about him. Cincinnati has basically not lost the last two years. They went toe-for-toe -toe with Georgia in what was the, what, Peach Bowl last year. Yeah. That's so impressive for Cincinnati to do. And I think they can still make it into the college football playoff. Yeah, I mean, they got a good shot. And look, I think he's kind of in that Campbell category, maybe a, a, a knock higher in the sense that they can be picky. They don't have to. I mean, think about the jobs that are open this year. And we've done videos for all of them. Virginia Tech's out there. Washington, LSU, USC. Like, Fickle could have some better opportunities. Florida might open up. Like, this is not a great year for a job like Miami to be potentially become open because there are a lot of good jobs. TCU's a good job. Like, there are real good jobs in college football available all in the same season. Matt Campbell and Luke Fickle can be picky. They can wait for better opportunities. Uh, Miami's a good job. But it ain't the best job available right now. Nope. That is for damn sure. And that's what uh, makes this thing tricky for the Hurricanes when they make a decision on Manny Diaz, which I still think they should fire him despite all of what the things I just said. We'll get to our top five in just a moment. you got to subscribe to Chat Sports. We've been humming out college football videos every single week for about three months now, and it's multiple per week at this point in time. College football hot boards. We just did a Heisman Power Rankings video. We go live every Tuesday for the latest college football playoff rankings as well. The link is below, youtube.com slash chatsportstv. Go check out our latest college football videos. Let's get into the top five. And this was a name we talked about for this job that I actually think makes a lot of sense, uh, Chase. James Franklin, who there was a lot of buzz to USC, but now with Penn State losing four of five, that seems to have slowed down. And also, I think Penn State is becoming more open to the idea of trying something else. And Franklin, you want to talk about rebuilding a culture? Miami needs that, and he's a heck of a recruiter as well, which I know you've mentioned time and time again. When the U was the U, their main calling card was recruiting. And the reason why this Miami job is desirable 
they're in arguably the best state in the country for recruiting because the list of recruits is endless. What's James Franklin's biggest strength? It's not game management. He's terrible there, but he's an elite recruiter. And I think that James Franklin, if he were to go to a program like Miami, and it certainly hasn't trended in the right direction this year for Penn State, I actually think it could be a mutual decision to part ways. He would be able to bring Miami back with his ability solely to recruit. Next year at Penn State has the top recruiting class in the country. That's notable, and that's really important. That's what James Franklin would have to do to really bring Miami back into being the elite program that it once was. Under Jimmy Johnson, when I was growing up under Larry Coker, they had so many elite players yep. to get back to the status of being one of the great programs in the country. you got to get those players back. Franklin could do that. These two jobs, Chase, have a lot of parallels. Nightlife, big city, yeah. celebrities, Ocean. They've, they've, they've <laughs> co coast, desirable locations to live. There's a lot of similarities. What they also have in similar or in common, Chase, neither have been elite for quite a while. So what's the better job? Is it Miami or USC? I would lean USC, but the Pac-12 is a worse conference than the ACC, in my opinion. So we'll let you guys decide. Type MIA for Miami, type USC for USC. Both have been great at times. Uh, be interesting to see which program really gets back first. Let's get to number four, Jamie Chadwell, uh, who's a hot young name, uh, Coastal Carolina. What he's done there is pretty unbelievable. Yeah, when you is. think about it. I mean, they've been a fo they've only had a football program at the Division One level for like 15 years or something. It's just ridiculous. Uh, regional uh, ties make sense uh, over there on the East Coast. You know. Maybe it's not splashy. Maybe he's not as proven at the Power 5 level. But I think this would be a pretty good hire if you end up with Jamie Chadwell, especially in a, in a competitive college football coaching market. No, I agree. What he's done there is impressive. And what Dave Clawson, who comes in at number three at Wake Forest, is really impressive too. Up until a couple weeks ago, they were undefeated. Yeah. And, uh, you know, what, what these guys can do from just a cultural standpoint of getting schools that are really on – the scrap heap, and then building them up into national promin prominence is really impressive. And that's why they become names on these lists. And that's why they're desirable candidates for an athletic department, because they're like, okay, we see what Jamie Chadwell did at Coastal Carolina. We see what Dave Clawson did at Wake Forest. Why can't they do that here in similar fashion? To win at Wake Forest, you've got to be a hell of a player. That's what I'm saying. Player developer, because yep. you're not getting big recruits. Dude, Wake Forest is like the Vanderbilt of the ACC. And they're about to, they might win the ACC championship. I don't care if the conference is down. What he's doing with one of the most impressive offenses in the country this year is, is pretty damn impressive, who also is a culture setter and, a, and an absolute beast of a coach as well. Mario Cristobal, who played at Miami, who grew up in Miami, who loves this university. He's got it rolling at Oregon, Chase, but you can't tell me the guy ain't interested if you call Mario Cristobal to come home and play uh, or be a coach at Miami. I would argue that Oregon currently is a better job than Miami. I think that's arguable, but the the personal connection and crystal ball strikes me as one of those guys is pretty hard to turn down, I would guess in my opinion. You grow up in you grow up in Miami, you become just obsessed with the game of football. You watch the green and orange in those uniforms and you're like, "Man, I'd love to either play for that program, I'd love to coach there one day." Mario Cristobal has an opportunity to do that, but I think Oregon is in a much better spot. Two, He's got in the Pac-12, you have an opportunity really to get into the college football playoff every year, yep. including this year because that conference is wide open. With Miami, you really have to just hit the reset button and build that up from scratch. But that's also desirable for a lot of guys because they see that as an opportunity to be a hometown hero. <laughs> Mario Cristobal has an opportunity to be that. We would have Cristobal at number one, but there's legitimate buzz, and I won't say hardcore reports, but some reporting that Lane Kiffin, the head coach at Ole Miss, is the front runner for Miami, and that if Miami were to indeed fire Manny Diaz, which we both believe they should, that not only would Kiffin be the front runner, he's interested. Like, he would take that job. That's what's the chatter right now in the college football rumor mill circles. This would be interesting. I mean, Lane's not afraid to bounce around. We know that. And here's the thing. Ole Miss is a good job. It's, he's, he's made it a consistent program the past couple of years. You can win there. 
You're never running the SEC, though. No. I mean, there's five, six programs that you don't even have to think about that are better jobs. Bama, Florida, Georgia, Auburn, Texas A&M, OU and Texas are coming in there. Like, Ole Miss ain't those universities. But Miami and the ACC, even with Clemson's last decade plus, Clemson isn't a historical blue blood. If you got it rolling at Miami, you can win the ACC year in and year out potentially. This is interesting, Chase, if they were to get Lane Kiffin, a guy who I know you're very high on. Not only is this rumor so juicy, but it's hilarious that it comes from convicted felon Nevin Shapiro, <laughs> who said that Lane <laughs> Kiffin would be atop Miami's list of head coaches. And there's reports Andy out there indicating, Andy Slater, that Lane Kiffin would leave Ole Miss for Miami. And I think you make good points in saying that in the SEC at Ole Miss, you're always going to have a roadblock in front of you. And maybe once in five years, you're going to have an opportunity to compete for a national championship. At Miami, in the hotbed state of recruiting that Florida is, you're only competing with the likes of Dabo Sweeney and Clemson. And does Dabo at some point leave? If Clemson continues to go downhill, that's a potential possibility as well. So for Lane Kiffin, he obviously understands that state very well because he coached there previously. I love Lane Kiffin, how he's rebuilt his image. I love his offense. I love how he adapts and evolves with the times and offensive football. And I think Lane would be a splash, pl uh, splash higher at the U, and he might be able to bring them back. I mean, listen, they're going to go 10-2 and two in his second year at Ole Miss. That's, <laughs> that's wild. That's, that's really good work. They're probably going to finish in the top. Top 10. Who will be Miami's coach in 2022? Those are our top 10 candidates. Maybe it's still Manny Diaz, but hopefully not for Hurricanes fans.